Gary Munro, Director of Golf here at Pitch Golf London. And today I'm going to run you through my own personal practice session. So how I practice here at Pitch um, to get the most out of it. You know, long gone are the days of just standing there on a driving range, hitting seven iron at the same target over and over again. Now you can really customise your practice here and put it into different sections. So the three different sections I always like to do in my practice are, I start off with my technique work. Uh, I do about 15 to 20 minutes of technical practice on improve. And after I've done that, I move on to the compete section where I'm working on short game shots, really sharpening my skills around the green. And then I really like to test it out under some pressure on the play section. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load up the improve section here. I'm gonna put it on, you know, I've got a choice now of, of, of new session over here. So what I can do is I can put it onto Lynx courses, I can put it onto Parkland courses. So as I open up new session, I'm gonna select Coeur d'Alene, which is a great, great golf course. There's a really nice hole here, the, the 14th par three. So now I've, I've chosen a hole I want to practice on. My focus for today is my takeaway. So what I do in my golf swing is I start to get the club coming too low and rolling it inside. My club path starts to work too much from inside to out. I get from six, seven, even eight degrees. That causes pushes and, and hooks. So now I've got it set up on here. I can actually work on my takeaway, which is, for me, I try and hinge the club up on line better versus letting it roll inside. My club path gets much closer to zero where I can hit straighter golf shots and ultimately better scores. So I'm gonna take my setup. What I like to do is I like to have a little rehearsal just to check where I'm trying to do with the club. So yeah, I'm happy with that position. I never wanna see that club head go behind me with my own swing. And then I'm gonna go for the shot, really get a focus on that takeaway. That was good, just hit it over just past Now I can have a look at my numbers over here. So that number up here is two and a half degrees into out. That's a really good sign for me um, that I'm taking the club back and hinging it up how I'm trying to hinge it. When that club get that club path number gets too much into out, I know that my club is rolling inside. So that's really good data feedback. Now to check that, I'm gonna walk over and I'm gonna actually have a look at the swing catalyst system to check how my swing looks and if it's getting into the positions I like to see. Okay, so what I'm going to do is draw the line up my club shaft here. Uh, and like I said, the main thing I'm working on today is when my takeaway gets underneath that yellow line and comes very low and around me, my path gets too much into out. So let's see if my club path is hinging how I want it to. Good, I'm really happy with that because that club is, is tracking up that yellow line. So I know the feeling uh, is marrying up with my club path numbers from my data. And that's what I like to check when I come into practice. So now at the end of my practice session, um, I actually click on the table view to see all of my shots I've hit today. And again, this saves to my Foresight Sports account. Um, and I can see my club path averages here are 1.3 and two out. And you can see each individual shot is very good. So that's my target in today's session is to get my club path more neutral by sorting my takeaway out. And you can also see the differences in speed between each shot down the left hand side there and very consistent, which is good for distance control. And then something I like to do is I like to take it up to the ball section at the very top and give me a bird's eye view of my shot dispersion. So you can see here, if you start to have a common miss or how wide your dispersion is, um, which is really good to get that as tight as possible, especially when you're going out into the golf course. So now I've done my technique practice, I'm gonna move on to the skills challenge. Okay, so how we get into the skills challenges is compete, games, inside six feet, and then we start there, we can start with level one, make sure my clubs are entered in station one, two, and three, and then we start that. So what this is, is there's a blue circle, which is six feet uh, circumference, and your objective is to get it in that to move on to the next level. So right now I'm gonna use my uh, 52 degree, Try and play one up there, keep it in the blue circle. It'll even tell you how close you hit it. So I think that's a two feet, three inches. And then from there, that allows me to move on to the next stage. The leaderboard that you see come up, that is a live leaderboard which Foresight have put around the world so you can compete with people internationally on this too. So after you complete this, you go through three stations and move on to the next levels. 
And then you've really worked your short game under pressure and different lies, different situations. Now after I do this, I like to really test my game and go onto the play setting. So I've covered technical practice, short game practice, now I'm going to put it under pressure and actually play some holes and see how it holds up. Okay, now I've finished my skills challenge and I'll compete, I'm going to move over to the play section. On here I can place any holes I want to play, some bit new game. And I'm able to see here a whole list of worldwide courses. You can choose from Lynx courses, Parkland courses, some famous courses. I'm going to go for Wentworth West, which is based in England. Um, that's actually home of the PGA Championship. So after that, you can choose what holes you want to play. So I'm going to choose the 18th, really good par 5 finishing hole with a grandstand there. And you can even choose what tees you want to play from um, and different sections like that. So as I load this up, my main focus here on this par 5 is, after I've chosen the line I want, is to make sure I've got the right club. So for me, my landing area is perfect for a 3-wood. So as I take my setup, my focus is really getting that takeaway how I've practiced in my technique earlier and just trying to repeat that motion. Okay, so I put a good one down there. It sits short of the bunkers and I could have a good chance of getting there in two. Nice, it's just stayed there for me. Also still comes up with my data so I'm able to see if I'm doing my takeaway correct. And now I've left myself 239 yards to go. And what I can choose to hear if I want to attack it and go for it, if I want to lay up. So for me, that's a perfect number for my hybrid. And short is never going to be good because you can see the creep. If you're going to bail out to the right hand side, is good here. Um, and again, I'm going to go through my routine of making sure my takeaway is good. I'm going to try and take the shot on and see if we can uh, give ourselves an eagle putt. Okay, so I've hit one. It's got a chance if it stays in there. Go on, get a bounce left. Very happy. Now I've left myself a nice eagle putt at Wentworth 18th. And that's how I finish off my practice session. So I'm really building pressure. I can feel it in between those shots. There's a lot more consequence to my shots there than just standing on a range doing seven irons over and over again. So that's how I personally practice. Um, I have a goal of every session. I split it between technique work, I split it between skills challenges to work on my short game, really hone in those scoring clubs. Then I test it out and play some holes on the course. Try and put yourself under that pressure because all it's going to do is build confidence. Now as I leave pitch today, and I'm going to go play at the weekend, my confidence is a lot higher as I've ticked all three of those boxes. Hope you enjoyed that video and I hope it helps your game. Thank you.